Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the thick of WrestleMania season. It's that special time of year when all of the waiting, all the speculation, all that fantasy booking comes to a head. All that grandstanding earlier in the year about boycotting the network is officially rendered meaningless because you know deep down when their backs are against the wall, WWE is able to put out something great every year. Even if the show itself isn't totally amazing, there's almost always one to two matches on the card that are truly WrestleMania worthy. Then of course, there are these matches. Matches that do a disservice to the legacy of the Showcase of the Immortals. Matches that do a disservice to wrestling itself. And this week, I'm going to rank them the top 8 worst WrestleMania matches of all time. Number 8. Sheamus vs. Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania 28. Just a heads up, my review of this match is going to be longer than the match itself. Oh man! A pro kick by Sheamus! A hook of the leg! Did it hit Dennis? In blindingly quick fashion, Sheamus kicked Daniel Bryan's face off in the opener of Mania 28 to become the new world champion. A match that on paper could have been great, fans were hit with one of the dumbest April Fool's pranks of all time. Though it made Sheamus and his finisher look amazing, it made Bryan look like a joke, completely invalidating the months he had spent as champion before this. Kane and Chavo Guerrero for the ECW title at 24 was even shorter, but come on, how much respect did the belt have by that point anyway? In hindsight, however, this booking blunder might have been the best thing to happen to Dee Bryce's career. For the rest of this show, as well as the Raw after Mania, fans were chanting his name and the word yes in an act of defiance, setting in motion what would eventually happen to him at WrestleMania 30. So, if it were for this complete and utter burial, Daniel might never have gotten as over as he did. Number 7. Uncle Elmer vs. Adorable Adrian Adonis, WrestleMania 2. WrestleMania 2 was held across three different cities in one night, a logistical nightmare that has never been attempted since. Despite having tripled the gate, this WrestleMania had about one third the action it should have had. Each city hosted one decent match at best, but it was Los Angeles that really got boned with this entry. The tone was set at the opening move as Uncle Elmer gassed himself after throwing a punch. Though Adrian was in the worst shape of his career at this point, he was still athletic enough to make Elmer look like a million bucks for those grueling three minutes. The two-time winner of the Wrestling Observer's Worst Gimmick Award won the match after evading the world's slowest leg drop attempt and following up with a flying fist drop. An adorable end to an ugly match. Number 6. The Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal, WrestleMania 25 as WWE headed toward the 25th edition of WrestleMania, an intriguing match concept was announced. A 25 Diva Battle Royal to determine the first ever Miss WrestleMania. They advertised women from the present and the past to be part of this match, as fans speculated who might be coming back. One woman who declined the invitation was Trish Stratus, who felt that it wasn't worth coming out of retirement for something that wasn't entirely thought out. That snub seemed to irk the company, but after seeing what transpired here, can you really blame her for not taking part? Instead of each woman getting her own introduction, all 25 females came down to the ring simultaneously to the dulcet tones of Kid Rock, as part of a concert that may or may not have given Hep C to everyone watching it. By the time the match began, everyone was moving around and getting eliminated so quickly that the fans and the announcers had no time to register who was in the ring or what was going on. Instead of giving the win to Beth Phoenix, Melina, Mickie James, or literally any other woman on the roster, the winner of this Miss WrestleMania match was actually a Mr. Perennial goofball Santina Morella dressed in drag as Santina, a match that was billed as a celebration of the history of women in WWE reduced to a comedy angle. Amazingly, it would take another six years for Give Divas a chance to start trending. Number 5. King Booker and Queen Charmel vs. The Boogeyman, WrestleMania 22. This match featured a future Hall of Famer taking on a future WWE legend. I still for the life of me can't figure out why the Boogeyman has a Legends contract. This match was a drizzling worm shits from beginning to end. The Boogeyman was already limited in the ring to begin with, but a bicep injury at a house show made things even worse. In the end, Boogeyman no-sold practically everything Booker threw it in before giving a worm-filled kiss to Charmel and hitting the king with the boogie bomb to win the match. God bless Booker for doing what he could, and a gold star to Charmel for her amazing acting here, but this match didn't belong on the pre-show, much less in the mid-card of the biggest show of the year. It's also worth talking about the pre-match backstage skit, which featured Booker and Charmel walking past a parade of freaks, including Pirate Paul, Eugene, Goldust, and Gene Snitsky. Wanna join us? <laughs> you know what? I'm actually not going to say anything about that, because that's still more dignified for Gene Snitsky than the potential of starring in just another romantic wrestling comedy. Number 4, The Undertaker vs. Giant Gonzalez, WrestleMania 9, and Kane vs. The Great Khali, WrestleMania 23. The Undertaker and Kane. Their careers are so intertwined you really can't talk about one without the other, so it only makes sense that I lump in their worst individual Mania matches here on this entry. 
Before Taker lost to Lesnar at WrestleMania 30, it seemed that his entire career was becoming defined by the streak. But despite that, his WrestleMania 9 encounter with Giant Gonzalez has always been glossed over in those spooky video packages. And do you know why? Because! Because it fucking sucks, that's why! The Undertaker's zombie gimmick only really works if he has someone mobile to work against, so when the dead man took on the airbrushed immobile giant, things took a turn. This was seven and a half minutes of punching, rest holds, and lots of goofy selling on the part of El Gigante. The match ended when Gigi was disqualified for knocking Taker out with a chloroform-soaked rag. On to Mania 23, where Kane took on this generation's giant Gonzalez in the Great Kali. Ooh, a rare interpromotional match! The spirit of the brand split is alive and well indeed. Even though the future Punjabi playboy didn't need to have his muscles painted on, he was just as limited in the ring as his predecessor. This match was equally lame, but at least it featured a cool spot where Kane picked up Kali for the first time and pulled a Hogan Andre 20 years later. The Big Red Machine kept up his losing ways on the grandest stage, being bested by Kali with his two-handed chokeslam, then being strangled by his own signature weapon from See No Evil. I'm pretty sure more people saw this match in that movie, but I'm not sure who was worse off. Number 3. Michael Cole vs. Jerry Lawler, WrestleMania 27 Above all else at Mania 27, beyond The Rock's rambling opening promo, beyond the lackluster main event that only existed to promote the next year's main event, beyond Snooki, there was this pile of crap. In a match that went nearly 14 minutes, in an overall segment that went nearly double that, heel Michael Cole finally gave Jerry Lawler his WrestleMania moment in an overbooked cluster of a match that saw Jack Swagger, Steve Austin, the coal mine, an attempt to throw in the towel, and finally, Jerry Lawler becoming a national hero after making Cole submit to the ankle lock. But the ultimate middle finger to the fans came when the anonymous Raw GM reversed the decision, citing Steve Austin's bias as a referee. Because that's what we needed. Vindicated heel Michael Cole. Number 2. Bart Gunn vs. Butterbean, WrestleMania 15, and Big Show vs. Aki Bono, WrestleMania 21. For this entry, I'm putting another pair of matches together because, like with number 4, these two carry a common thread. In this case, wrestlers going way out of their element to fight overweight athletes from another sport and failing hard. Up first, the boxing match from Mania 15. Brawl for All winner Bart Gunn was fed to the wolves, specifically the fat, bald, American flag-wearing wolf that was Butterbean. Despite his lumpy look, Butterbean had legitimate boxing experience, as opposed to Gunn, who could have trained every day from the end of the Brawl for All to WrestleMania and still wouldn't have been prepared. As you've seen on this show several times before, Gunn got knocked out by Butterbean and his wrestling career never recovered. Fast forward to WrestleMania 21, when The Big Show carried on his abysmal win-loss record for the annual event in the most embarrassing way yet. For whatever reason, The Big Show challenged the Hawaiian-born sumo wrestling legend to a sumo match. They really went all out with this one, removing the ropes, bringing in a sumo judge, the works. Then it was time for the big men to remove their big kimonos and oh god my eyes! Giving credit where it's due, WWE did a very good job recreating the atmosphere for a traditional sumo match, almost to a fault. See, the thing with sumo wrestling is there's a lot of ceremony involved in the match itself that doesn't translate well with those unfamiliar with the sport. There's a lot of walking around, a lot of posing, more walking around, tossing some salt, some squatting, some more walking around, come on to start going e hunt on each other already! The shoving was officially underway, with a lot of pausing for dramatic stare-downs, which do not happen in real sumo matches because real sumo wrestlers are there to win, not to play to the crowd. After about a minute, Sho is unceremoniously tossed on his bare ass to the outside. Never before, never again, God willing. Before we find out which Mania match is the worst of all time, here are a couple of honorable mentions. Triple H vs. The Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania 12. In his first WrestleMania match, Triple H hit a returning warrior with a pedigree, Warrior no-sold it, and quickly destroyed Hunter. That's it. It's one of the most hilarious squash matches of all time when you consider where the squashy ended up. The match is talked about very differently depending on when people have talked about it. On the self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD, Triple H said that Warrior's backstage politicking marred the experience of his first WrestleMania. But after the Warrior's death, Trips gushed about how much of an honor it was to work with him. I guess time heals all wounds. The Fabulous Moolah vs. Velvet McIntyre, WrestleMania 2. The majority of women's matches in WrestleMania history barely get beyond a decent rating, but this one is the worst of the worst. Rumor has it this is one of the many matches on the card that has time cut, and it shows. The sub-90 second match ended when McIntyre flew off the middle rope and missed, practically coming out of her clothes, while Mula scored the pinfall and maintained her death grip on the championship. And the number one worst WrestleMania match of all time is... Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg! Look. We have no idea how their match in Orlando is going to turn out. It could be another quick squash, it could be a technical masterpiece, we don't know. All I do know is it has to be better than this atrocity. 
On one hand, Lesnar vs. Goldberg in 2004 was somewhat of a dream match. Two guys who had been booked like absolute killers colliding for the first time ever. What's not to love? Well, how about the fact that both men were on their way out of the company? Goldberg's contract was set to expire for roughly 12 years, while it was revealed just days before the show that Brock Lesnar would also be leaving WWE to pursue a football career. So, given this set of circumstances, it was only natural for the reasonable, well-balanced fans in New York City to give these two grapplers a proper, respectful send-off. Rather than try to shut the crowd up and give them a hoss match for the ages, these two decided to shit the bed because the fans had already given them their money. In this 13 minute match, we saw lockups, flexing, staring, some outside brawling, long rest holds, and not a whole lot else. Suplex City wouldn't be around for another decade, so he didn't even have that to entertain us. In the end, Goldberg defeated Lesnar with his trademark spear-jackhammer combo, unknowingly planting the seed for their modern-day rivalry. His hand was raised by Steve Austin. Oh yeah, Austin was a special referee for this match, as if that mattered. Then he and Lesnar both received a stunner for their troubles. Nice knowing the two of you. See you again in 2017! For failing to live up to the hype on a fantastic scale, for completely wasting the intrigue of their guest referee, and for giving fans a four-finger stinker on their way out the door, Brock Lesnar vs. Goldberg at WrestleMania 20 is the worst WrestleMania match of all time. Got any other nominees? Let me know in the comments section below, and be sure to stay tuned for next week when I reveal my picks for the 8 best WrestleMania matches of all time. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane. And I'll see you next time.